All right, guys, so we're back with a brand new video, and I'm going to show you guys how to get started with GraphQL for our project. So we're going to go ahead and install Express GraphQL as well as GraphQL. So these are two dependencies that we need for our project. Express GraphQL is going to be the middleware for the Express application, and GraphQL is going to be another library that's going to give us uh, features for GraphQL, such as the type system and creating uh, schemas and queries for it, okay? So the next thing that we need to do is we need to import from Express GraphQL. We're going to import a function called GraphQL HTTP. So this is basically going to allow us to register a middleware. So let's do that app.use and we're going to set the route to GraphQL and we're going to invoke this GraphQL HTTP function. And this middleware is basically going to set up the GraphQL server for our Express. So you can actually have both REST API with GraphQL, okay? But just know that GraphQL is not the same as REST. And when we make requests to slash GraphQL, we can't actually use an HTTP client. We need to use a GraphQL client. Now, fortunately, we can actually set the graph IQL property to true. This is going to give us a graphical user interface, which is pretty much a GraphQL client that allows us to talk with our GraphQL server. We're also going to need to set a schema. Now we're going to set this to root schema. Currently, this is undefined because we haven't defined it yet, obviously. So you're going to get an error in the console. It's going to say root schema is not defined. Don't worry. We're going to define that in just a sec. Okay, let me actually do this. Let me run this over here. There we go. All right, so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a folder called GraphQL. And I'm just going to create an index.js file. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create an actual root query. And then after we create the root query, we're going to create a new GraphQL schema. And we're going to export that so that we can import it in this app.js file. So that way it'll be registered as a schema. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import some classes from the GraphQL library. We're going to go ahead and import GraphQL object type. We're going to be using this class to create our own uh, schemas in a sense. We're going to use it to, well, not schemas, we're going to create our own types. Okay. So we're going to create multiple different instances of GraphQL object type to kind of like shape our data. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a root query. So the root query is going to be a GraphQL object type instance. And this is going to be the bare bone of our GraphQL application. Okay, we're gonna basically describe all of the fields for our root query and depending on which field that we uh, use whenever we hit the GraphQL server, that's going to return specific data. So let's first give it a name, so let's do root query. And then we're going to pass in the fields property inside this object. And then we're going to create a field name called get user because all we're going to do is we're going to return the user that is uh, currently logged in. So now the type for this user is going to be a user type, which we have not defined yet, but we will in just a second. Now, another property that we're going to have set is the resolve field. So this is actually a function and it takes in two parameters. It takes in parent and it takes in args. So the parent parameter is going to refer to the parent resolver. In our case, we're all the way at the top level. So we don't have an actual parent resolver, but when we actually need to query uh, sub fields, those sub fields will have its own resolvers. Okay, so it's going to be kind of like a chain of resolvers. So for example, if we have our user type, okay, well, what properties does the user have? So we can actually go into our database. And we can see that the user has a discord ID, discord tag, avatar and guilds. Okay, now for the guilds, this is an array of guild objects. Okay, so instead of returning just an array of regular object literals, we can actually type that, right? We can actually say, hey, look, let's return instead of an array of objects, let's return an array of guild types, guild objects. So we'll define that above in just a second. But to get that to work, we would need a sub resolver, which we will not worry about right now. Right now, I'm just going to put a console log and I'm just going to say inside user resolver. And that's going to be it. Now we have to go ahead and define the user type up here. So this is also going to be a new instance of a GraphQL object type. But for the constructor and for the object inside the constructor, we are going to pass in the name first. So user type. And for fields, we're going to basically have this return 
an object. So first we're going to set the Discord tag and the type of this is going to be a GraphQL string, just like that, very easy. Okay, we're saying, hey, look, we have a user type. We need to make sure that we are shaping the user type data accordingly. So whether it be from an API or database, you need to make sure that for your type, your fields are the same as your primary data source. In our case, our primary data source for the users is based off of the user schema. So we need to make sure we are mimicking that. So we have the Discord ID next, type GraphQL string. Whoops, I can't type today. GraphQL string. Avatar is also going to be a GraphQL string. And then a guild is not going to be a GraphQL string, but it's going to be a GraphQL list. Okay, so GraphQL list is also another type. Whoops, not scale type, list. And we need to pass in the actual type over here in the constructor, which is going to be a guild type. So think of lists like arrays. Okay, that's just pretty much the the array for the GraphQL type system. Now for this guilds, we need a resolver function for this. This is going to be the sub query. Okay, the sub resolver function, the child resolver function that is going to be invoked after the parents resolver function gets invoked. So we're going to go ahead and console log some stuff just to show you guys what's really going on. So let's go ahead and do this console log inside guilds resolver. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, do that. Okay. And there we go. So we're inside the guilds resolver. Now we're going to go ahead and create one more type, which is the guild type. And you guessed it, it's going to be an instance of a GraphQL object type. The name is going to be guild type. And we're going to need to define our fields as well. So let's do that. We're going to return an object. And we're going to have the ID. So that's going to be a GraphQL string. Just like that. I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple times. And change it to name. Icon. Owner, this is going to be a GraphQL boolean instead of a string. And notice how it gets imported up there. And permissions, this is going to be an integer. So you guys are probably wondering where I'm getting this uh, data from. I'll show you in just a sec. Let me just do this. Okay, so before I continue, I have my database. And you can see over here, this is how all of the objects for the guilds look like. We have the ID, which is a string, the name, which is a string, icon is also a string owner boolean permissions is an integer features is an array of strings and then permissions new is a string so that's where i'm getting it from so i need to make sure i'm shaping it accordingly okay so features is going to be a new graphql list of graphql string okay there we go and then permissions new it's going to be a graphql string like that okay and that should be just fine and we actually don't need a resolver for any of these fields okay because none of these fields have any other additional data we need to fetch the only thing for our user type the reason why it has a resolver inside here is because for guilds we have an array of guilds and for each one of those guild objects it needs additional data to be fetched so instead we're just going to pass in a resolver and it's going to fetch what it needs to fetch Hopefully uh, that makes sense though. So let's go ahead and create a new instance of our GraphQL schema. So we're going to just export that as well at the same time. So module.export equals new GraphQL schema. So we're saying the query to root query. And now we can go ahead and import root schema from GraphQL. And since the name of the file is index.js, I don't have to add index. And if I go over here to our app, you can see that uh, we don't have the error anymore. Now, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to actually go to localhost, port, whatever. So whatever port you're using. So I'm on port 3000 and you want to go to slash GraphQL. Remember that route is based on what you have over here. Okay. And the reason why we're seeing this user interface is because we have graphical set to true. If I set this to false, it's not going to work. Okay. So you should definitely have this enabled for development, but if you are running in production, you should definitely disable that. But this is going to be 
where we can test out our queries. Now, if you actually click right over here on docs, okay, it pretty much allows you to double check your queries and your schemas just to make sure everything's good. If I click on root query, you can see that I have the get user field and it returns a user type. And if I click on guilds, it's gonna return a guild type. And this is what it looks like. You can see right over here the annotation for an array of strings or a list of strings. It's, it's basically the type itself wrapped between brackets. If I go back over here, guilds, we have guild type wrapped between brackets. That means it's an array or a list. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a test query. So how do we make a query though? Okay, well, we're going to use the query keyword and then specify a pair of curly braces. But what do we do next? Okay, well, remember, we are at the very top level of our query. We have our root query that has the get user field. So we're going to call it get user. And this is supposed to return a user type. Okay, but why do we still have this red error though? Now the reason why is because we actually need to specify the fields that we want. So remember, GraphQL is going to give you what you want. So I can say, hey, look, I want a Discord ID. Okay, if I press play, see how it says null? The reason why it's saying null is because we aren't actually returning anything. But don't worry, we'll do that in the next video. Now look over here, we, we have inside before I end this video, I just want to show you guys how everything is working. So if we look in our console, you can see it says inside user resolver. That is being logged from over here. Inside user resolver. Okay. Now, why is it not calling inside guild resolver? Okay. So let me actually do this. I'm going to go ahead and ask for the Discord tag. Just pretend that these fields return an actual value. Pretend like they actually are doing something. So it still says null, okay? But if you look at the console, it's not triggering the guilds resolver. Okay, well that's because we're not asking for guilds. So let's ask for guilds. Okay, remember, we can ask for literally whatever we want. So let's get guilds and let's do, whoops. Now the reason why we have this red error is because we cannot have an actual empty query. You need to make sure for every other sub query that you're passing in or any query in general, you actually specify the data that you want. So let's actually look at what our guild type is and what it can return. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's get the ID. So let's pass an ID and you're gonna notice it pops up in the IntelliSense. Let's get the name. Now if I press play, it's still gonna return null. Don't worry, it's, that's normal. Okay, but it, it's actually not triggering the uh, the guilds resolver for some reason. Let me check real quick. Let me try something real quick. Sorry about that. Because it should trigger the uh, the resolver. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. All right. So we were we were we were on the right idea that it wasn't going to trigger the guilds resolver if we didn't ask for guilds. So you can see how right now it's not triggering uh, the guilds resolver. But if I ask for guilds, okay, it's going to trigger the guild resolver. Okay, cool. And you can see right over here, it triggers it in a sequential order. So first, it's going to go inside this get users resolver. Once that's done, it's going to see that it's asking for guilds. So what's going to happen is it's going to go into the guilds resolver. And now once that's done, it's if there's any other fields that we need to query, we're going to go query their resolver as well. So that's pretty much kind of like the resolver chain in a sense. Like I said, the parent over here refers to the parent resolver. So this parent is going to reference its parent resolver, which is right over here. So that's pretty much it for this whole video. Let me actually do one more thing. Let me just return an empty object for now. Okay, now we're getting an error, but don't worry, that's because we aren't actually, oh wait, I'm sorry, it should be an array. Okay, there we go. Okay, but anyways, you guys get the idea. In the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and actually get the data from the database. So we're actually gonna need to do a couple things. So this is gonna be good because we're going to one, fetch data from the database, two, fetch data from the API, okay? So I'll see you guys in that video, peace.